A jury threat is an individual coming into the finale of a season that will hands down win the game if they make it to the end. It's that obvious. Everyone at home knows it, the jury knows it, and even the players themselves probably know it. This video will be covering the 5 biggest jury threats in Survivor, and how they achieved said status. At number 5, no surprises, we have Jesse from the most recent season of Survivor, Survivor 43. Now Jesse was the main individual responsible for one of the most complex plans ever executed on Survivor and the only real blindside within his season. This final six move consisted of him betraying Cody in one of the most imaginative ways possible. See, this season there was an advantage called the knowledge is power, where a person could take another individual's idol if they were in possession of one. While this advantage only existed once in prior seasons, it was the freaking Terminator this season. Geo got it and was immediately voted out, then James found it and was shortly voted out thereafter, but with it appearing twice now, the cast were worried it would go back into circulation after James's blindside. Cody had an idol birth through the power of friendship, hat making and hating salespeople, but gave it to Jesse in case anyone stole it from him. At the final six, Tribal, Jesse played Cody's idol, burning it and providing immunity for Owen, and this, like Jesse predicted, spooked Carla enough to play her idol in spite of her not receiving any votes. Jesse had burned two of the biggest threats idols at this tribal council, backstabbed his closest ally, and had left Carla completely defenseless at the final five. It was also at this round, Jesse revealed Janine's idol, which was given to Dwight, then given to him, that people assumed Dwight was voted out with. And this added another page to his resume about the fact he completely fooled everyone. Yet again, with such aggressive moves that the jury adored, Jesse would have been a titanic challenge for any of the three others to go up against at the end, as they were playing under the radar games which are significantly harder to get a jury on side with. Unfortunately, Jesse never won the final immunity challenge, but winning immunities was the main resume builder for Terry Dates. Terry came into the merge outnumbered 6 to 4 and was the main target for the majority, but through consistent immunity wins, managed to survive. That being said, while he was safe, the same couldn't be said for his allies Nick, Austin and Sally that were all eliminated. However, not by him, which is particularly important to older seasons, especially in Panama, where jury members could be bitter at those that voted against them. That being said, Terry was renowned as a perpetual underdog, tying the record for most immunity wins at 5 and only survived the final 4 round due to finding the first instance of the super idol. In the likely Terry and Danielle final 2, Terry curb stomps her as even one of the Kasaya Alliance members, Shane, in the actual timeline, took up a large amount of his final tribal speech saying how undeserving the final 2 were. Which, considering all the things he screamed at them within the game, honestly is almost a compliment coming from him. Shane continues to mention Terry should be the one sitting at the final two, considering he was the most deserving, and I feel this sentiment would have been reciprocated by most other jury members. So for being seen as playing the game so honourably, and achieving a record matching immunity score, he's all deserving of this placement, but beaten somehow by an even more dominant challenge beast. Ozzy is called a lot of things by the Survivor community, some I can't repeat on my child-friendly YouTube channel. Nonetheless, he has adopted the title of Definitive Challenge Beast by most of the Survivor community. Three-time player Ozzy participated in Season 23 South Pacific and made it through several rounds of the game thanks to that season's twist in Redemption Island. Redemption Island was a faraway island individuals went to when voted out. They then competed in challenges to continue until they could re-enter the game and this obviously favoured Ozzy who was renowned as a challenge beast. Ozzy kind of broke the system however by getting voted out on purpose to beat opponents and when voted out for the second time at the merge he basically hid on the island. On redemption, as noted by Sophie, the eventual jury members were voted out, were naturally pissed at them but came to Ozzy's pleasure dome. On Redemption Island, Ozzy listened to the heartbroken contestants, fed them with the fish he caught, and then got their respect by beating them in a duel. And the fact Ozzy never had to vote anyone out meant none of the jury were pissed at him. 
So despite being voted out two and eventually three different times, Ozzy would have slam dunked everyone. Most of the jury were Savai and were annoyed by the Apollo family. The likely final three would have consisted of him, Coach and Albert. Two individuals that were notably horrible at Final Tribal. And if one returnee wasn't enough for you, I think it's about time we go international. For anyone that hasn't seen Australian Survivor, Luke Toki is the most adorable man and the first thing you want to do is adopt him into your family in whatever way possible. Luke, therefore, has broken the world record for most adopted human at 1 million, whether he likes it or not. Champions vs Contenders 2 was the fourth template season of the Australian Survivor franchise, wherein Luke was the first returnee ever in Australian Survivor history. Coming off season 2, Luke was a massive target due to his reputation of making big moves, having a lot of winner equity, and of course, a hashtag creeping. Due to his accumulated threat level as a target from the final 7 and on, but through consecutive challenge wins he was immune from being voted out. This coupled with the respect he got from his peers due to being the only returning player and his triple threat game made him a massive jury threat. On top of that, I also touched on it earlier, but Luke is one of the most likeable people ever who seemed like a genuinely great, happy, upbeat person in spite of working extremely long and hard hours in the real world to support his family. Literally no one could say a bad thing about Luke, and in a game where social politics is inherent like Survivor, that goes a long distance. Unlike the prior contestants, Luke technically didn't reach the finale as it was a final three that season, but given the sheer length of the game on top of an extra four to six people, while ultimately fitting this video to a T, it makes sense for him to be here. That being said, on the topic of sense, I sense number one of this video might be rather controversial. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this individual's game, but it would be a disservice to this video for Rick Devins not to be included. Barring Season 40, Edge of Extinction, is the only season to have all non-quitters be part of the jury. This was a massive advantage to Rick, as he bonded very closely with all the other pre-merge boots, but the majority of the jury made the merge, so the question was how Devins earned their respect. Firstly, Devins was the Iron Man of the season, from the final 9 and on, either winning individual immunity or barely surviving due to clutch idle plays. Devins was also extremely performative during these idle plays, such as at the Ron Tribal Council, where objectively he should have been voted out, he voted for the incorrect person, and was overall completely duped. However, as I've already said, Survivor is a social based game. You don't need to have control as long as you can convince people you had control and have an entire minute superhero monologue. Rick was eliminated early, but came back with the perception he was playing with house money, and like it or not, but four immunity wins, two idle plays that saved him, and an incredible roller coaster storyline from such an entertaining narrator like Rick, was like riding on the wall. If Rick made it to the final three against whoever, Jeff might as well have cancelled the entire tribal council and handed him the million dollar check. But alas, Rick flamed out in a last stand against his extinction buddy Chris, allowing him to claim the Devon's bounty, securing the win. Securing 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year is my goal, so to help me win my dreams, hit the like and subscribe button. On the screen now is a video about 5 times Survivor was on easy mode, a very fun video I'd recommend you check out. Nonetheless, have a great day, and peace!